Ladies and gentlemen, oops, it's not on. Please welcome Director Gurinder Chadda. Actors Manish Dayal. Tanvir Kani. Kuma Kureshi. Samrat Chakravarti. Paul Burgess. entertaining, informative, and opened our eyes to a whole different aspect of how the Brits left India. Um, Gurinder, uh, right up front, I know that most of your, your stories, all your films have been about personal relationships. Mm. This one isn't an exception, however, it tells us about the history. And if you can share with us the story of why you made this film after your visit to your grandfather's house? Is that when it started in Chela? Well, I did an episode of Who Do You Think You Are, the BBC documentary. And uh, 10 years ago, I went for the first time to Pakistan, to Jila, where my grandmother had left the, her house uh, in August 1947. And when I arrived, I was quite shocked because the whole town had come out to greet me and uh, they threw flower petals at me and they presented me with a shawl and they said, welcome, you're our daughter. This is your home. We're so happy you've come. We'll help you whatever you need. We'll help you find your grandfather's house. And it was a very warm welcome that I was not expecting. Um, and eventually when we did find the house, it turned out there were five families there living in that same house now who had come as refugees from India and everybody had, no one really knew my grandfather because everyone had come in 47. So it was at that moment that I felt that I wanted to do something finally on partition, having grown up under the shadow of it. Um, but I wanted to do something that was about the ordinary people uh, more than uh, what I'd seen, you know, being done, you know. Um, so I wanted to uh, tell the, that story, but as we started working on the script, Paul and I, you know, we had the uh, fortune, you know, to, um, to uh, we were working with Freedom at Midnight, which most, most people recognize as the sort of seminal book on partition. Um, and we had already started doing the upstairs downstairs version of that story in Viceroy's house. And we actually started working on it before Downton Abbey. <laughs> um, but, um, as we started working on it, two years in to the writing process, we met, uh, I was at a reception in St. James's Palace and I met Prince Charles. And I said to Prince Charles, I'm making a film about your favorite uncle. And you know, Mount Batten was his real favorite uncle. He's the sort of grandfather he never had sort of thing. And um, Prince Charles said, what are you basing it on? And I told him, and he said, that's fine, but have you seen this other book? Um, and he said, this book will show you how my uncle was totally set up by the British establishment, and he never got over it. And I was sort of quite perplexed because I was talking to the future King of England in St. James's Palace. So I thought, well, if he's not the establishment, who does he think the establishment <laughs> is? So all these sort of questions started coming up. And we eventually found the book. Um, next day I was going to India, got to India, I got a phone call from someone, uh, who, R Ramala Bachchan in fact, who said that my son has a class fellow who wants to be an actor, will you meet him? And I tried my utmost not to meet this chap, because I was just here for work, and I was like, oh no, I don't want to meet another actor. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I avoided it, but then this ch chap left a message on my phone and said, look, it's very hard, for people like me to meet people like you, I'll be in the hotel lobby. When you have five minutes, please come and see me. You know, please, you know, just give me five minutes. So of course, I got 
slightly complete bitch after that, <laughs> and went down, met him, and it turns out, you know, his name was Samar, Serena, his father, he said, had written a book on partition. He read, I was making a film on it. He wanted to give me the same book. And it was the book that Prince Charles had just mentioned to me two days ago. So that happened, and then by the end of the week, I was back in London meeting his father. So there were a series of events that sort of happened. And, um, and then with uh, Narendra Singh Serena, I was, um, you know, I questioned him enormously about his theory. And, and what happened with Narendra was that he had been in the British Library in 1997, writing a book on the Maharajas. And Narendra Ji had been at a um, ADC to Mount Batten in 48. And he'd also been a high commissioner, Indian high commissioner to France for 20 years. He was now retired. He was writing this book in the British Library on the Maharajas. He was, he was from a small principality uh, in UP called Serena. Um, and one day, it just so happened that a box of papers had come back into public domain. And they were handed to a librarian to index. But it just so happened that the librarian was Indian, Mrs. Ghosh. And she recognized the significance of these top secret documents. And the first one was talking about, uh, from 1945, and it was talking about the future of India and the Indian Ocean, uh, and what would be the consequences for Britain uh, in that context, you know, if Britain were to hand India back, you know. So she took the papers over to Narendra and said, sir, I think you should look at these. He immediately understood uh, the significance of them and uh, then ditched the book he was writing, I wrote Shadow of the Great Game. And he himself went to the National Archive in Washington uh, because of course Roosevelt had a role to play in all this. Um, he went to the British Archive of course and the Indian Archive. So he did a tremendous amount of research and we went through that with him, um, you know, as Paul and I were working on the script. So all of us grew up thinking, learning what the Brits wanted us to, yes. that it was about Flair Batten plan. And the poor man was a thorn in uh, Churchill's schemes, yes. all his uh, Machiavellian schemes. So actually, I didn't know that till I saw your film. So your story took a whole different turn then. Did well, it? we had all grown up with that story. You know, we had all grown up with the idea that you know, Britain had decided magnanimously that it was going to leave India in 1947. And once the decision was made, um, we started fighting with each other, Hindu, Muslim, Sikhs. Writing ensued, poor old Mountbatten had no choice but to divide the country. And so partition was our fault. So that was the official historical line. But they'd made a deal with Jinnah already. Well, the documents suggest that there were discussions. My mum, who's 91, um, my mum had always maintained from when I was little that um, growing up in Rao um, that everybody lived side by side very happily with a lot of respect for each other. She says in Punjabi, Jado Ona Da Eid Onda Si, O Sano Mathiai Dende Si, Jado Sada Gurpurup Onda Si, Si Ora No Mathiai Dende Si, Diwali Si Sare Menande Si, and what- That's what you made Manish say in the film. Kind of, yeah. In English, In English, yes. In English, yeah. Same thing, yeah, well, everything in the film is quoted from real people. Every piece of dialogue, everything is from a real person telling us stuff. And then my mum says, Je Achanak Patani Kiyoya in 1947. She says, Egorea Nekar which I didn't get him to say. But, <laughs> I wanted like, to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but she says that go, you know, Gore did black magic on us and Achanak Sanopatani Lagya. We didn't know what happened and everything got destroyed, the Bahogya. And so for me, it was a great moment when I finished the film and my mum came to see it and I could say, Mum, you were right, you were absolutely right, and this is what happened. Because I think most Indians know that there was something fishy, but no one could quite put their finger on it. Right. So right. hopefully the film answers those questions. You know, at the end, you got Jeet and Alia to meet. Was that 
sort of um, something because I read somewhere that your grandparents met again in a refugee camp. Was that sort of uh, because that happened, you wanted them to? Yes, I mean, I say in the film, after 18 months they were reunited. Yeah. And that was the story of many people, you know, many people were, you know, found each other, you know, in camps or in food queues and stuff. So it was a reality, but when we were making the film, you know, that scene was in and out, in and out. <laughs> because, you know, there was this idea that it's too corny, you know, to put that in. So I think if you were a sort of, more of a cynical, uptight British, <laughs> type executive, you know, it felt like it was perhaps too Indian an ending. Um, whereas for Indians, they wanted more of that, you know. Um, so I think it was a, t you know, it's just, it was, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to strike those balances for an Indian audience, a Western audience. Hard to strike those balances, you know. Um, and so in the end, you have to do what feels right for you. And I did what I felt was right for me. And I also, 70 years on from partition, I wanted to make a film that actually had hope, you know, which is why in the end, we weren't going to use that stuff about my family. You know, that was never in the script. It just, it just came out during the, in this very cinema. We had a test screening with a test audience of the previous cut and uh, previous cast cut oh cut <laughs> um, <laughs> no no previous cut and uh, the audience there you know was actually a largely non-Asian Asian audience I don't know if anyone here today was there that day uh, it was a different version of the film. But it was interesting how Americans really responded. I mean, they scored the film very highly in terms of history and knowing about things they didn't know about. But it was really after that that, that um, uh, Cameron McCracken, uh, our producer in London, felt that it would be really good to give some kind of hope at the end. And he always knew the story of my grandparents. And so he said, why don't we why don't we do that at the end? And I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, it's too personal. And, but then when I started thinking about it, the thing what brought it alive for me was taking the picture that we'd always had of my grandmother and her four children that was taken uh, back then, was bringing that alive with my uncles and my aunts today. So going and photographing them today and then dissolving from them as children today was brilliant. that to me made it very cinematic and also just felt like um you know we as humans can really throw a lot of shit at each other but there's something about the human spirit that will that will see the better side will see the human side uh, at some point you shot the film in jodhpur and was it just eight weeks Ten weeks. Ten weeks. Okay, yeah. that's still amazing. And what what were the challenges in putting together all the grandeur and the refugee camps and everything to replicate Delhi there? Well, well we shot in Delhi as well. I mean, we shot yeah. in the real Viceroy's house, which is uh, Russia for mm -hmm. uh, So we shot there, and we shot in Jodhpur at the Maharaja of Jodhpur's palace, the Maid Bhavan, um, and. You know, we were lucky with our locations. We had fantastic locations. I had a great crew. I love shooting in India. I always have a great support network there. So you get, you know, great production value in India. And, and because India has a great film culture, the crews understand epic, you know, and big. So, uh, you know, I would always <laughs> say shooting in India is a good thing. Uh, yeah, she was, I'm sure. Well, serious about the thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the challenge was uh, bringing together such a, you know, mixed cast. You know, because it, you know we had Huma, who is you know from Delhi. Yeah. Manish from South Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> South. <laughs> South. South Carolina. <laughs> Tanvir, who's from Britain but born in Lahore. Um, Samrat. Samrat, Bengali New Yorker. Paul, Japanese-American, I mean, 
on Puri, of course, you know, uh, who lived comfortably in all these worlds, and then Michael Gambon, who everyone was like, oh, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. You know? <laughs> So it was, that was the challenge, was bringing together uh, an impeccable cast so that every, everyone felt like they were from 1947 India. Tell me about the casting. How did you, you know...